All right, guys, today is the day we have a huge change here in the SimRig setup studio area. Can you see what it is? It's sticking right out, or at least it is for me. This thing. I know it looks the same as before, but you'll notice there are no scratch marks and war paint like I had on my Alpha Mini because this is the Alpha Ultimate. So SimMagic, being a supporter of the channel, have kindly sent out some gear to try out. They've sent out the Ultimate. They've sent out the haptics. They've sent... Um, the GT Neo wheel, which I have used in Germany, I was fairly impressed with, but I'm going to be able to give it a good deep test of my own as well. But what I'm very curious about is the Alpha Ultimate. It's going to be my first reactions after coming from two years of the Alpha Mini. So hopefully there's there'll be differences, I'm praying. Um, hopefully a bit of lap time help, who knows, but I'm not in, in it for that. It's more so for the stability and to have the extra strength that I kind of, I've been needing recently, so... Very interesting to try it. And again, thanks so much to Sim Magic for supporting the channel, helping me with the gear to help make better content for you guys. So stick her off. Let's see how this goes. I am very, very curious to try this. Okay, so I'm going to put on the FX wheel because I just want to make one change at a time. I don't want to change too much. Um, let me just do this because this wheel does not know this base. All right, so now we're connecting up. I'm so eager to see what it's like to have strong force feedback. I have the rig, finally. I've done things in the right process, you know. I have a rig that doesn't have any flex. I have this guy bolted down big time. I probably should fix this up, but hey, don't worry about that. I was <laughs> I was so eager to make this. I was only going to put two screws in, but then I was like, nah, I'll use four screws. I'll do it the right way, you know. Let's move out. It definitely, um, it feels very similar. Classic Sim Magic, kind of, you know, the smoothness of the bass. Um... Okay, I can feel it now. It's uh, it's different, all right. I have it set to, I don't know what I had it set to before. Let me lower down the in-game volume. We're clear behind. We're all clear. So just trying to, oh, yeah. <laughs> There's something very strange happening where, like, I'm turning too much. I'm feeling the strength and my mind and my muscles after an awful lot of conditioning is telling myself, you're clipping, stop turning that hard lower down your force feedback, but I'm not clipping at all. Like, at all. Like, I wouldn't be able to do this with my Alpha Mini. Great bass, but just the power is... Ah, here. <laughs> what the hell? That's such a difference. That is such a... bloody difference. Let's just chuck it in here. Yo, you can hang. You can proper hang with this thing. That's very interesting. As far as the sim... <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I did try some high power bases before in Germany, but like, when you have it at your own rig, it's, uh, it's something else. Oh, jeez, okay. That, it's very stable. That's one thing I'll say. It's super, super, sta it's super strong as well. Like, it is really, really strong, and I'm not clipping at all. I'm not sure what my new... That's mad. Usually, like, the wheel would clip out and I'd spin there. Like, I can just pin it here and the car just does what it's told. That's one lap in. It feels like I can get on power earlier. Now, let me just get this right. Because in general, I hear a lot of people say that a uh, stronger wheelbase won't make you faster. Now, what I'm feeling at the moment, it has a lot of potential to possibly help me with consistency. I'll say. Ooh. <laughs> What do they call it? Subtle foreshadowing? Um, let me slow down a bit here because it's, uh, it's quite a lot. So, one thing I'm feeling straight away is that the strength is allowing me to pin it earlier in a corner. You know when you turn into a corner, you feel the car load up and your mind kind of projects a line of where you're going to go. So you know if you've gone into a corner too slow. For example, I'll show you up here what I mean. We have eight seconds behind. So when you turn into a corner, let's say I go too slow into this corner and I turn right and I have loads of track on the left. That kind of means I didn't go that fast. Another example of that would be, let's say this, turn into a corner and then you get in the power too early and you come out here. You didn't use all the track. You weren't going fast enough. And you know that at the apex of the corner because you feel it in the weight of the wheel, the weight of the wheel and you know where the car is going to be going. But because this thing loads up so soon, I can easily tell where the car is going to be going, so... Speed? I don't know if it's going to help me there, but consistency? Like, you know... It's nice to be able to turn in and not accidentally oversteer because you have that extra force pushing you back. It's, uh... It's something else. My apologies if this video is going to be kind of, uh, ranty, because... 
well, firstly, it is. It's just the first impressions. Um, if you're watching this, maybe you're just curious. You just, you're up for a Jaxer vid, hopefully. Or you're actually thinking about buying an Alpha Ultimate. That's what I would do if I was buying a wheelbase. I'd go watch 20 videos online of unboxings, first impressions, people testing, and that sort of thing. But God, it's uh, very impressive. It's very impressive. Uh, this isn't a review of sorts. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to review this. I may, I may not. But this is more so just, you know, seeing what it's like to have that extra force feedback. So let's see if we press the auto button, what it's going to do. Let's just clear this corner set. My poor muscles have to relearn absolutely everything when it comes to force. Because, like, even hitting some pretty wild bull bumps. Like, I'm, I'm not really clipping. So it's kind of made it a little bit weaker, which is cool. Yeah, there's a lot of stability in the wheel. Yeah, it's very easy to get on power. I can feel a lot more than I could with the 10 newton meter wheelbase. I'm curious as to why that is. A lot of you are very actually knowledgeable. You know, um, Ali is always in the comments. There's always a lot of cool guys. Review for the tube, letting me know down below. They really know their, their, their gear pretty well. And um, let me know what you think about this. What am I feeling here? What I think I'm feeling is more strength, but more wheel speed. The wheel has more strength to be able to make those quick turns a little bit quicker and it's very impressive the way you can kind of negotiate corners let me see if i can pull up the uh, time delta yeah okay i'm on a clean lap now so let's see if we can get a lap time in and see where that kind of brings us i do have to uh spend a bit of time practicing with this wheel but dear god like it's it's decent it is I just have to kind of restructure the way I treat the wheel. So at the moment, this is too, kind of too strong. Uh, I'm going to put it down a bit because <laughs> it's a bit too strong. It's simple as. I wonder what I have. So in the settings, I have it set to um, 23 newton meters, 100% uh, torque, force feedback settings, whatever. But like to be able to rock in fourth gear like that is pretty cool. I have the weight. I'm obviously a bit sketchy around because I'm just not used to it, but kind of lighter hands are needed. That's what's causing me to do that kind of stuff. Like, you're able to draw your line better in your head. That's the easiest way I can kind of explain it. It's a huge difference. Definitely a huge difference. Okay, that's definitely a slowdown, is it? Nope. It's easier, like, in the mid-corner. Like, I have a lot more control in the mid-corner. That's kind of what I'm noticing. Um, like an awful lot more control in the mid-corner. I've really botched this corner now. Being very rough and not smooth enough with the controls. I'm sure there's different things I can do. So if I come down to here... I'm going to turn off the feedback detail and just see what it's like, because I did race with that for quite a long time, so... Oh, wow. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Okay, I think I might keep the feedback detail on, because um, it's kind of useful to be able to lean into the corners and feel what's going on. 36-0, so we have put in a decent lap time. We're not in the quickest of lobbies, of course, but... Wow, I have to say this is um, an experience like none other. Honestly, the Alpha Ultimate is, uh, it really earns its name, 100%. It's quite a huge jump from the Alpha Mini. I've always been curious as to what it's like to be able to go over the curbs and, you know, the feedback just accepts it. Like, you know, there's, it's not going to throw you off. It just takes it like an absolute champ. Probably be a lot faster on that corner. I'm having this, like, understeer coming in. The under oversteer. Let's nail this. Coming down to Aqua Minerale is uh, interesting as well. Usually the car is very unstable here, but again, with the extra force feedback, it's, uh, it's very predictable. Very, very, very predictable. I know what people say when they say it's easier sometimes to catch a slide with a bit more FFB because you get a pretty early indication of when that slide is about to come. Now, it's probably a good time to mention I'm no expert in this stuff, you know. I'm just letting you know what I'm feeling. Uh, I would like to think I'm an expert of the Alpha Mini, because I've had it for quite a while, so I really, 
I know that wheelbase. I really, really know it on an intimate level. 58. Brake balance. What are you doing to me? Get that down. Um, right, let's try 55.5. And we'll go for one more lap and see what we can do. But I'm already getting very, very, very comfortable with this wheelbase. Super comfortable. I'm wondering how it's going to affect the race. And I might even try and make a race soon. There we go, 40, 55, 5. How are you doing, baby? Missed you. There we go, 58 does not work in this car. I like to move that back a little bit, get a little bit extra turn in. Uh, a bit of sand, that's okay. It's not sand, they're stones, big stones, actually. Let's do third gear here. Early on the power in third gear. Hell yeah, we can do it. Wow, okay. Yeah, no, I'm impressed so far. I was expecting to be impressed, and that's partially because of all the brilliant reviews online. You know, I watched a lot of Race Beyond Matter about this wheelbase, you know, years, two or three years ago, or probably one or two years ago, I'm thinking now. Opa! Hold on tight to the wheel. I watched a lot of videos about this wheelbase. Everyone was pretty handy with it. Uh, handy. They were pretty happy with it. Super happy with it. Comparing it to the Simicube 2 Pro, some people preferring it. You know, when you have a wheelbase, from what I've heard, and I've tried the Simicube 2 Pro, I know the SE2 Pro does have a lot of settings you can configure, but, geez, when you, when you take in the price difference, you know, the, a wheel like this is, uh, uh, hello, grass, good to see you again. Can't. <laughs> Oppa. It's very visceral, that's one thing I'll say, it really connects you to the racetrack. Makes it hard to take your eyes off the road, um, does come with an emergency stop button, 35.2. I wish there were some quick boys in this lobby now so I could uh, gauge myself with them. But I guess we'll know in the next race what kind of times I can do if I put in adequate practice. But that section just feels a lot easier. Feels, I know I said I'd do one more lap, but this is the last lap. The last lap, and then I'll just chill out and have a little uh, post-race debrief with y'all. Let you know what I think. Okay, it's looking like it's coming now. Okay. All right, I kind of loosened my hands off the wheel a bit there, hit it, and we got a bit crunchy. So I think I'm probably going to have an incidente soon with the high force feedback. Hopefully I don't, but uh, I just got to respect the fact that it is quite high power. So let's go back to the pits and final thoughts of the first impressions would be that it's a stunning wheelbase. It really is a stunning wheelbase. It's very strong. Uh, the settings that I'm using are... Like, here's what I'm using now. If any of you guys have any tips for me, let me know down below, please. Feedback detail, I'm just trying it out recently. I'm putting it up to the max, and it's giving me a lot of cool feeling in the wheels, so that can stay. Wheel rotation speed, I'm going to have to experiment with this because I just don't know what to be doing with this wheelbase. So 70 feels kind of cool. I don't know. Should I go higher? Should I go lower? Any tips is nice. I'm not using any of these guys yet because I never used... Uh, FFB frequency or smoothness on my other base, so like as far as heat goes, this thing is stone cold. <laughs> stone cold. If I ran that kind of torque on my old Alpha, that thing would be uh, slightly warm to say. But yeah, wow. Well, uh, very impressed. So that's my first impressions of the Alpha Ultimate. I will be racing with this in the future. And again, thank you so much to Sim Magic, all the guys there who've helped to support the channel, helped make all this possible to, you know, give me the best of gear to race with and make content with and hopefully get quicker that means i'm using the, i have the best gear now the fx pro alpha ultimate i got the p1000s i got the haptics going on them soon so if i don't hit 3k in formula someone needs to give me a sp <laughs> someone has to give me a smack and a half but uh, i have a feeling it's coming soon i have a feeling it's coming soon and this is going to enable me to hopefully get in there and really get down to some really gritty racing so again Thanks so much, Sim Magic, and to you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next one, hopefully 3K.